Okay, oh, the last judge send their email too. I think it's Ellie. Sent Ellie. Okay, just tell me when you guys have the email chain, and then when we're all okay, I'll start speaking. Um, hey everyone, just a heads up before we start the round. Uh, we're gonna be reading a case with pre fiat impacts. Okay, did everyone get the email chain? Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, I just got it. Cool. I think if the judges are good, I can start right now. All right, I'm gonna take that as a yes. If, I'm, if everyone's not ready, just say so. I'll start my first word. Wait, let me turn on myself. Lambert negates, oh, hold on, my timer wasn't even ready. Lambert negates, contention one is global credibility. Currently, SOP 18 writes, the US troops provide a security blanket, yet CAM 19 details that Trump's withdrawal from Syria has under, undermined our commitments to all of our other global allies. This is problematic as Tarimov writes that the Middle East is a litmus test of American power, but Brandt quantifies it empirically when we have failed to use military force to undermine our credibility in later scenarios. The impact is North Korean preemptive strike. Brands, Bosco, and Edsoni all find that the Middle East and East Asia are linked. If the U.S. withdraws from, from the Middle East, South Korea will develop nuclear weapons within six months, as they have less belief in our willingness to get involved to defend them. World War 13 finds that empirically nuclear proliferation has been the reaction to a U.S. withdrawal. Taylor concludes that if South Korea were to get nuclear weapons, South Korea would view it as an existential threat, forcing them to launch a preemptive strike on South Korea. Using game theory, Clue 20 concludes that a U.S. withdrawal would be the direct reason for miscalculation for South and North Korea, as there is less time to weigh responses amongst actors. Taylor concludes that this strike would spark a war drawing in U.S., China, and several other actors in Hall and 19 finds. This would kill millions, and Meade 14 finds that they create several scenarios for nuclear war. Shell writes that nuclear war dwarfs all other impacts. Contention 2 is militaristic might. While tensions with Iran may be high, the militaristic might of the U.S. has prevented a full-blown war. As Horowitz explains, the tensions are always surface level. But 919 writes that the chance of war is lower now than it has ever been and really quantifies that increased truce presence has decreased the, uh, decre has leads to a decreased amount of conflicts. Sadly, withdrawal creates two scenarios for conflict. Subpoint A is Saudi civil war. Knights 18 writes that the U.S. military currently provides Saudi Arabia with a security blanket. But Saab 18 writes that a pullout kills the security guarantee, creating two fronts for conflict. Luck 18 writes that the absence of a U.S. security guarantee, Saudi religious leaders will believe that the Crown Prince MBS is compromising their stability, causing infighting within the royal family. He furthers the U.S. security guarantee will be different in whether or not succession war is triggered. Iran 18 concludes that this succession will become a civil war, drawing in Iran, Russia, and the U.S., killing thousands, if not millions. Subpoint B is Iran and Israel. While 19 writes, Iran-Israel tensions are high. Thankfully, Green 20 finds the U.S. is successfully containing Iran using our military. However, if we withdraw, our containment strategy falls apart. Cropsey furthers that our power back community left behind that Iran would now fill as they look to expand influence. Unfortunately, Rami quantifies that power vacuums make conflict more than three times as likely, and Arnheim 20 concludes that a withdrawal of U.S. troops mean Iran and Israel get embroiled in a conflict. While this is already bad enough, there are two main ways for this to escalate. First, an Israeli preemptive strike. Oren says that Israel is preparing for a war now and mobilizing troops, but APAC writes that U.S. troops provide a security blanket to Israel. According to Gilead and Kraft, this security blanket makes Israel feel stronger, but they would feel as if Iran is stronger if we were to withdraw. Farley 19 and Abbott 14 and Vidinsky 19 all warned that if we withdraw, Israel feels Iran is getting stronger and Israel will launch a preemptive strike on Iran. 
And Cropsey writes that in this absence of U.S. military support, Israel will increasingly turn towards China, Russia, uh, China and Russia for support, making this attack worse. As Mueller refers, there's historical precedent for Israeli preemptive strikes in two other conflicts. Horshik furthers that Iran will retaliate, triggering the Middle Eastern war, which Dallas 13 finds will claim millions of lives. Second is triggering regional proliferation. Cropsey writes that a war between Iran and Israel would likely see Iran bridge the small gap needed to enrich its uranium and acquire nuclear weapons. Solovsky in 2018 writes that had Iran proliferated, Saudi Arabia, Algeria, Egypt, and Turkey would have likely followed. Because of ideological differences, Bar 13 warns that a polynuclear Middle East will not avoid confrontation through mutually assured destruction, ultimately leading to a Middle Eastern nuclear war putting over 400 million lives at risk. Thus, you must negate. So, can everyone hear me all right? I think there's an echo. Okay, never mind. Is there? Is there still an echo? No, I think it's good. Okay. Is everyone ready for the AF case? Okay, cool. We affirm the resolution. Our sole contention is Arma Christi, the weapons of Christ. The military industrial complex has been coupled with American Christianity, the worship of the weapons of whiteness. Astor 19 finds that Trump evangelicals believe with missionary zeal in our military military and seek to establish our faith everywhere. We don't hesitate to deploy our elite missionaries, our equivalent to the Jesuits, the special operation forces to more than 130 countries annually. Pope Donald boasted that he could end America's Afghanistan war through the nuclear genocide of 10 million Afghans. Thus, we believe that freedom comes through obedience. Those who break ranks from our militarized church and protest, like Chelsea Manning, are treated as heretics and literally tortured. The military literally inscribes scripture onto the weapon, packaging worship into arms as agents of a violent global baptism. We 10 find that New Testament Bible passages by Jesus Christ are inscribed on high-powered rifle sites provided to the U.S. military, then used by U.S. troops in Iraq and Afghanistan. The entire political apparatus has been ceded to white Christian evangelicals bent on destroying the heretics in the Middle East and using the military as their tool. Right-wing evangelicals have been gearing our government up for war with the evil empire Iran for decades, preparing us for the American crusade. Sipple 20 finds that one day after Trump ordered the airstrike that killed Soleimani, he was in front of an evangelical evidence touting the assassination with claims that God is on our side. War with Iran has long been a key plank within the conservative agenda of many evangelical Christians, both inside and outside the Trump administration. We have never seen enthusiasm like we see for this president. Pence and Pompeo, both evangelical Christians, were reportedly among the key voices. The coupling of religion and war has obfuscated any conceivable consequence of this conflict. In our bid for the holy war, we only listen to Pope Donald and his college of cardinals. All those are heretics who refuse to listen to what God commands. Perry 15 finds that right-wing American politicians claim the Crusades were a justified action against Muslim aggression and argued that we should just focus on combating Islam. Crusader iconography, the idea that Christianity will solve the world's problems is not uncommon in the U.S. military. Any ideology that divides the world into us versus them will be used to justify violence. It stems from an understanding the past is unchanging. One where Christians always will be at war with Muslims. Crusaders were driven to slaughter non-Christian civilian populations. Christianity has been regularly used to justify uh, colonization, cultural destruction, and racial discrimination. Pope Donald has used the rhetoric of Deus Volt to run rampant over his opponents, using his religious power to label his opponents heretic. Shaker 19 finds that when policies of leaders are given a godly label, they cannot be criticized or opposed. Trump is illustrated of this. He has withdrawn from international agreements without the slightest humility. The Trump and the, without the slightest humility. The Trump presidency has left the world dazed, but concerns are solved with the reasoning that God wills it. Framing the conflict as religious war pits all of America against the evil Muslims, justifying unending fear and dehumanization of the non Christian other. Comb 17 finds. Islam has come to represent a primary threat in the U.S. public imagination. Media characterizations, too, refer to merciless beheadings and indiscriminate violence. Islam is almost always publicly framed through fear, but fear remains largely empty of specific meaning. Fear is a vehicle and product of socialization that is physiological and cognitive, individually and collectively felt, perceived, and manipulated. Thus, we demand that the U.S. remove its military presence from the Middle East to end our senseless crusade. Scholars are the starting point for ending our horrible policies. We have tolerated 40 years of Christian conservatism. It must end. And now, endorsing our advocacy instead of banal parroting right-wing rhetoric is the only way we can demand an end to 
Pope Donald's crusade. Dirksen 04 finds the West has not learned that there are better ways than war to solve major conflicts. Strategy should focus on the education of children as on political activism. Scholars have a role in peacemaking. During the crusades, philosophers suggested alternative choices. First, scholars help people find out and associate with new thinking. Second, ideas of scholars often precede public opinion. If scholars have ideas about wars the masses do not share, with time, public opinion may catch up to them and government policy may change. Framing our interpretations of the value of debating the resolution only comes from the in and out of round knowledge production from debaters. Thus, you should prioritize epistemological interrogation. Gerk 98 finds that debaters must account for the communicative impact of discourse on the policies that they express and the processes by which those meanings are communicated to and interpreted by various audiences. Thus, to end the Crusades, we affirm. Yeah. You got the first question. Yeah, okay. So let's talk about the the, the, the here in the top. Is Israel the only side that actually, I mean, sorry, is, is the U.S. the only side that, pers like, I guess, pushes this motive of like the Christian white knight type style? Yes, because our military and political is intertwined with Christ with white Christianity. Right. So there's like no right. other like country in the world that like pushes the the, the, the Christianity basis. I mean, like no other country. No, 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 that's not like countries can be can have Christians. They just don't have to no, use like, like, intertwine like, the military with Christianity and propose military actions as a crusade. Like so Donald it's just Trump the crusading mm -hmm. them. Yes. Like President Trump is I think the only president in the world who's saying things like, oh, we should focus on Iran. We should focus on, on like on like taking them down because they're non-Christian, right? We tell you that they've literally like rallied up audiences, like Christian audiences against Middle Eastern nations. And I don't think any other countries are doing that. Yeah, do you want a question? Yeah, thanks. So let's talk about your argument about like your contention too, right? You say that the military is key to like deterring Iran. Well, uh two things like the only our both sub points don't really use that as a link in it's only perceptual for example our first uh, civil war sub point is uh completely based on perception of the mbs and its politics so if mbs like use it loses like he loses the uh, us like relationship uh perceptually like and politically it, it he falls out of power and secondly for israel like that's okay, another but, perception argument yeah like, but it's based there. it's based on the length that the u.s is keeping like iranian expansion no, I, would, I would argue like it doesn't really matter if the u.s is preventing anything but rather like the perception right. or the perception that we're being there yeah but the perception only happens when the u.s prevents expansion right is that your link no, or are you saying that the u.s doesn't have to provide expansion like for example our sub point would be about israel like Wait. iran could be expanding as much as we want but as long as it thinks that the power the balance of power is still in their favor uh, then they won't launch a preemptive strike. But as soon as they realize that the balance of power might be out of their favor, like basically when the U.S. pulls okay, out, that's fine. That that's has been worse. Yeah. Uh, can you I get a question? question? Yeah. Okay. So why should I prioritize like out of fiat's uh, out of fiat's like impacts over like the just pre uh, in? Because it's the only impact that can be exported out of the round. Like yeah. voting okay, for so you does who, nothing. Who, who here is like part of the media, part of Fox News? That's gonna. That change, doesn't matter. Like, that doesn't matter. Like, because that doesn't matter because our evidence tells you that you must prioritize epistemological interrogation because debaters are academics right so we right, tell you that you need the most important thing is to send an intellectual signal and spread this discourse instead of repeating right, the rhetoric that christians are in government I, I still don't know like i don't understand how this how you're gonna say send a signal to the people but the higher ups who actually are the ones like like pursuing that, this well uh, that, this like it's better than like whatever than repeating the rhetoric of like the government, right? We tell you that our discourse is most important in the round because we can actually make an out of round impact. Because voting for you okay. doesn't do anything. So just about the out of round impact. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, we're gonna run like a good amount of prep time.
We'll stop prep. We'll stop prep. How much prep have y'all used? That was like a minute 45. George, can you mute yourself on my call? Yeah, thanks. Um, okay. Give me one second just to pull up a timer and get myself situated. Stopwatch. Cool. It's just going to go straight down the argument, I guess. I'm going to begin my first word. Everyone can hear me clear, right? Uh, I'll take that as a yes. Okay. Start on the top. They try to tell you that like the like US expansionism is like perpetuating like Christianity to like inscribing scriptures and stuff, right? First, I would tell you that this isn't going to change in either world. Our Gorman evidence indicates that when you withdraw, we see a Russia fill in into the region because Russia feels like the Middle East is like a key part of their strategy. They're going to fill into the region. So even if the US withdraws, Russia fills in. That has the implication because the Perper 19 evidence tells you that Russia is like primarily Christian and they're like talking about a Christian crusade right now. There's an empirically seen in Syria. So even if we were to withdraw, we would say that Russia would just fill into the region. They would expand Christian uh, Christianity, like the Christian crusade that they talk about. They did the same thing when we withdrew from Syria. At that point, we say that like that means that their entire nothing in their entire argument changes. At that point, you will go to our impacts because we tell you that despite th this argument, will this impact will never change. They're like in round, the pre-fiat and uh, post-fiat impacts will never change. So you look to our impacts in the round that can actually be changed by saving millions of lives by stopping like any of the conflicts that we mentioned in case. Secondly, I say that with, if we withdraw, the Glacier evidence tells you that China will also fill into the region because China has a, 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 a like growing ties in the Middle East. They want to like expand like uh, economically in the region. At that point, we would say that China is ex exceptionally worse for the region. A very good example is the Uyghur genocide that they're doing right now. In China, China is like literally oppressing a lot of Islam's by like uh, sho shoving them into concentration camps. At that point, we say that China would probably make like a, uh, make like expansionism worse on Muslims and like encroach more is uh, more, more of like Islam. At that point, we say that it gets worse under their world because China will also fill in. That's like a direct turn on their case. Then on their uniqueness, they say this entire like scenario is perpetuated by the MIC. The problem is the MIC is largely inevitable for two reasons. Number one, the MIC makes up a lot of like the US economy and they're like very strong. They have a lot of influence. Like Eisenhower tried to get rid of the MIC and he completely failed. The MIC is something that's always going to remain regardless of whether we withdraw or not. So it's going to stay in other places. It's also going to stay in the Middle East, like uh, like other relations. On top of that, like we're also going to see like arms sales continue in the affirmative world, which means we're still going to see all this, like we're still going to see a lot of influence. Secondly, the resolution specifies nearly all, which means we still keep limited presence in the region. At that point, the MIC still has some level of influence, which means we still expand the evangelical agenda they talk about. All of these non-uniques mean that their impacts will happen in either world uh, because there are other actors that like trigger them. At that point, you look to our impacts that actually can be prevented. Then they have this link about like how Trump is like warmongering for a like, war with Iran to expand like his evangelical agenda. Two responses. Number one, Trump is a non-interventionist president. He has literally campaigned on non-interventionism. He has said he's not going to go with war with a country. He's like, uh, he just wants to like export. He makes sure like not to like intervene in the region. At that point, like a good example is like Venezuela. He hasn't intervened there. Secondly, I would say that seventy-six percent of the voters don't want war either. Especially with like the recent election, with the election coming up in November, Trump would never risk like a war to quote unquote expand his agenda. At that point, we would say that this like dealing with the contention, like their only like link in a military presence, never actually triggers. Let's go to the impacts. First, they talk about media characterization. The problem is this is largely non-unique. We would say that media characterization is going to happen in either world. Like even if you withdraw, that doesn't somehow change the uh, post-fiat impact of like how the media characterizes the region. This is going to happen in either world. There's no one that can solve this. On top of that, there's no one here in this round that is like from Fox News or anything like George Bardock and Crossfire. There's no like solvency that like voting them up in this debate is going to like change anything. At that point, we say they like go vote off of like education by actually debating the contents of a real case. Secondly, they give the post-fiat impact. Uh, also, I'd say that we uh, on the post-fiat impact, we don't really link into the argument because like with our rhetoric, the post-fiat impact only applies if we link in through rhetoric, but all of our contentions about the perceptual change when the US leaves has nothing to do with like evangelical expansion. So we don't really link into the rhetoric. But then I would say that like on the post-fiat impact, we would probably get a lot more like uh, out of round, like they talk about out of round benefits and cross. We get a lot of out of round benefits from um, debating like the impacts of the case and weighing the impacts of the actual case. Like uh, that like helps you understand debate. And that's what the reason we're here in the semis. So like, I'd say that like that probably solves back better. And finally, I would say that like we're teenagers, like no, no one here can like really solve this. So I'd say the only way to vote is like what you can actually change. And that is by like going to the negative side. You know that like these impacts will be triggered if you negate or affirm. All right, I'm going to take a really quick second to prep. Let me just start my timer.
All right, so that was 35 seconds. Is everyone good? So the order is going to be frontlining. Then on their case, I'll start with an overview. Actually, you can just fully overview on our case. It's just explaining our advocacy. And then their case with a weighing overview. And then I'll just interact the line by line after. Is everyone good? Let's start in our case. There's one thing that they can see that probably independently frontlines almost all of their responses. They can see that judges in this debate are academics, not political scientists, meaning none of the desirability or offense that the neg reads to you or any of the responses that they reach you matter. Insofar as we prove that we're rejecting religion and politics, you vote for us. It's that simple. If you believe that religion and politics is bad, you vote for us. This argument went conceded in rebuttal. They had four minutes to respond to it and they chose not to. With that, let's go on to some of their answers. First, group both the fill-in arguments. First of all, we're not saying, we're not advocating for a pullout. We don't advocate for the resolution. All we're advocating for is a change in the status quo. We don't know whether you vote AF or NEG actually does anything because all the literature and media is skewed towards one side. But what we do know is that when you affirm, the judge sends an intellectual signal about our arguments and how help, helps solve back for this problem that they talk about. But second of all, they can't give you a, a single example of a crusade that Russia or China has started in the past. We don't know if this argument's true. I don't think it is. I don't think the judge do either. Then. Let's go into their argument related to like, it's inevitable. First, they say that the MIC has influence, but they concede the Dirksen evidence from case. What Dirksen indicates is that in the past, the church had a big role within the, uh, within the last crusades, and it was, it was seeming as though they were invincible. But the public debates that they had and like scholars all came together and they started talking about this, and that solved back for the last time that that had happened. Then they said the resolution says nearly all. Yeah, that's exactly why we're not defending the resolution. We're just defending for a change or deviation from the status quo. Then they say that Trump is non-interventionist. First of all, this is probably a walking link into the K, denying the fact that Trump is interventionist while conceding the simple evidence. It says that right after Trump invade, in, invaded Iran and then like went to talk to, to like an evangelical group of people, just proves that A, Trump is like Trump is um, in, in, interventionist. But second and more importantly, even if Trump isn't, his cabinet definitely is. Then they say that media will continue to like characterize people. Well, at least the affirmative isn't banal parroting the rhetoric of the media. It's a try or die. But second of all, they concede the Combs evidence that says that when you remove religion from politics, you solve back for all the things that they talk about. Then they say that like out of round education is important. No, we say that their education is a unique form of violence. It's like Dick Cheney in the 90s spreading rhetoric when we thought that that was good education, but it really wasn't. It's just dangerous. And then at the bottom, they say that we're just teenagers, but Dirksen specifically says that the education of children solve back for all their impacts. With that, start on their case with an overview. Our argument is that religion and politics is inevitable as the United States was built to be a city upon a hill for white Christians. American Christianity has controlled all aspects of politics, such as, uh, from, such as justifying slavery and the policing of women's bodies in the status quo. White Christians literally inscribe scriptures onto weapons. Worshiping through war is impossible to remove Christian influence from military right now through topical debate. We demand that white Christians be held accountable for America's original sin by rooting out the religious assumptions behind policies. By voting for us, the judge will send an academic signal to political leaders and condemn uh, Christianity and politics. Scholars ended the cr original crusades affirming can solve them again. Debating this topic is irrelevant while society is dominated by Christianity. A, Christian, polis, uh, Christian politicians won't list, ever listen to the policies, su uh, suggestions that are suggested by religious leaders, but B, current policies ma uh, merit by, relig by religious underpinning behind the scholarship, like how, like how we're always in conflict with, uh, with Iran because evangelicals like Mike Pence hate Iran. It is impossible to know whether the U.S. presence in the Gulf is good or bad without questioning the assumptions behind, this pol behind these policies. Outside the, outside the debate space, we don't know what affirming or negating means, but the reason you should affirm is to change the status quo. Even if you do not believe in removing troops, the AF in this debate in, in this debate around is sending an intellectual signal about religion and its overall role in, the, in politics, thus the role of the ballot, is to vote for the team that combats Christian militarism. Our argument related to otherization of Muslims outweighs all other impacts. Dehumanization is the root cause of historical violence and often tends to be ingrained deeply in society. Smith 11, dehumanization is far more widespread, vastly more ancient, and farly more profoundly intertwined. Dehumanization is the belief that only some beings appear human, but beneath the surface where it really counts, they aren't human at all. Dehumanization is associated with war, genocide, and the destruction of civilizations. Then on to their case, we would contest topical knowledge in two ways. First, this topic is a form of ego stroking by the military to have debaters read literature written by so-called experts in the field of America's College of Cardinals in order to conclude what which one side betters American hedge. Their, their model of debate ensures that no matter who wins a policy run, the military gets to continue their mass violence. But second, even if the app had anything to say about this topic, it literally would not manifest in anything since the political will just prayer arguments away and continue bombing the people of, people of color through unfettered military intervention. Thank you, Fern. Can I use FlexPro real quick? Uh, sure. Uh, I'm gonna wait. Start now. All right. What was your first response? Like you said, something like right before the app has like no, um, like your first response in the actual like topicality thing. Like, uh, it's just that this. Do you want me to like read it again? Or just explain it? Like I didn't. Get uh, it. like all the, a, a lot of scholars are um like are, are just using literature backed by white Christians, so a, a lot of it's skewed and violent. Got it. Fifteen used. 
Right. Are you good for cross? Yeah. Did I get the first question? Of course, yeah. So you say there's no empirical examples of like Russia or China doing a crusade, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in my rebuttal, I mentioned Russia's Christian crusade in Syria and China oppressing the Uyghur Muslims. Aren't those two very good empirical examples? Okay, but even if you win this argument's true, like I'm glad that you know these on hand, it doesn't really matter insofar as you A, can see that judges are, pol are academics, not policymakers. B, you also can see that we're, you also like agree with us when we say that we're not defending the in, in, like inter we're not defending the implementation of the app we're just defending the role of the app in this round as a metric to like spread discourse about this argument so you so you're you don't defend the resolution but by definition the app is supposed to defend the resolution correct you no, no wait wait, like, who, I, wait, wait, wait. I, when did wait when did we agree to this resolution this is so bold this is like second cross if you on, wanted to, on, if you wanted to make this resol if you wanted to make this definition you definitely should have made it in like the four minutes of construction on, so that you I, have to define, I have to define what a debate is and what the advocacy is for sure, each side. Sure. yeah if, if we're contesting the definition you should definitely provide a counter definition but you chose not to meaning that our argument flows through i'm uh, gonna take a question now actually sure okay yeah so let's start on your argument related to um yeah let's start on your argument related to like war prevented by the united states right on your uh, like c2 mm -hmm. yeah so like every single plot you pass what has happened as a result of it um, I'm sure you can tell me it's a very yeah. So we've actually seen peace, but then why do all your authors say that uh, it's going to when, lead to when war? Did we, when did we see peace? Like, like when we, in 2011, when Obama tried to like pivot to like Asia, we just saw a like air like uprising of like terrorist groups and stuff. Actually, I would say that a lot of your literature is skewed, and it only decided to start pointing out the Arab on, uprising so, right so after you, the United States left to, in order to prove that the United States uh, genocide and crusades are needed. All my authors because they're all Christian and quote unquote evangelical. Yeah, is that actually, and even if they're not, even, I know you're going to stand up here and be like, oh, one author isn't. They all are based on the same source, and they all are based on the same skewed viewpoint, which is why our app is a priori to any of the arguments that are topical in this debate. Hang on, hang on. So, you, so you're, you're telling me that essentially you can read this one abusive argument and just like it's in not that, abusive. It's not abusive. We link it. We link into all. We link into all ground that you talk about, and you had lines to truth test our argument. You just chose not to do it effectively. Hang on, hang on. we we truth tested your argument in rebuttal. We no, just you that no, you like didn't. like. Okay, so you brought up this like chart, like literature thing in like second rebuttal. Like, we haven't had time to respond to it, but we would just say yeah. that like. Firstly, how do you know they're all based on the same source? Like that's that's fundamentally just not true. Uh, Every, I mean, I mean, okay, true. like you, you can challenge that notion, and then we'll just like probably read you evidence that says otherwise. Like I'm sure there's like um a lot of good literature out there that proves the same fact. But when the United States central government, it's much like in, during the Crusades, right? A lot of like the media or a lot of like the propaganda that, would be, that was being spread around was like pro church, pro Crusades. But then as soon as the Crusades ended, people started to realize as a result of these scholars that ended the Crusades in the first place, people started to realize like, hey, the Crusades weren't good. Hey, these people are actual people, not just people that we need to like kill that, with our knights and with our swords and stuff. Whatsoever. Like, what does that have to do with like like the literature being based on the same source? Like, where did you where did you go from this? Yeah. So if they're all based on the same source, then all your rhetoric is violent. It's all Dick Cheney's rhetoric. So or, I don't know, like Mike Pence right now. Everything know, like, is Trump. contingent on Dick Cheney. Just as one person has somehow painted all literature. Well, I, I feel like you're just trying to make our argument seem more ridiculous, but you don't like to interact with the warranting behind it, and that's cross. Okay. Can I see evidence that it's all based on one source? Uh, yeah, we'll pull it up right now. It was an analytic, but I think I can find it. Okay. No, like, was there evidence read in rebuttal? That's just what I care about. No, and um, okay. I probably point. have to Google evidence, but uh, I, 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 I know it exists. If it was an analytic in rebuttal, then it's fine. We'll yeah, it's it. cool. I think I have, I think I had it down. It's just like... The solvency of the debate because they don't still don't give you a warning. Dude, you're not on mute. Dude, dude, homie, homie, you're not on mute. Homie, you're not on mute. We're going to restart prep because I couldn't hear a thing George said. I'm just going to – like, we were on call, but I, like, couldn't hear him, and now I can hear him. So we, I didn't hear anything.
Okay. I'm probably going to start on our, uh, on their case, actually, responding to the K, our case overview, and then the response, like the few responses that they give, and then uh, I'll extend my case at the end. Uh, wait, one more time. How much prep did y'all use? Uh, it's either all or we have a few seconds left. I thought I was timing it. Because it kind of got messed up because he couldn't hear me for the Yeah, that's cool. Part. Don't worry. That's cool. Okay. Um, time will start on my first word if we're all good. Okay. Start time now then. So on the top of their K, they really don't respond to the actual warranting that we give that the, even, even if they give have an impact of judges being academics, it's still very heavily mitigatory because none of these academics or the judges they have actual have to have any actual link into the media outlets. So even if you're denying this status quo, you're changing anything, the change is at, at best extremely mitigatory and will never change the politics of the United States, will never change really anything. In that case, they have no solvency because none of these judges are either Fox News recipients or any actual part of the media. At best, they're just going to simply think about this is oh my goodness they ran a k how cool but really you're making no solvency which simply is simply making no solvency and that's actually very contradictory because with you guys trying to make a change in the actual part change in the world i argue that you're simply just pushing it back on us because you're ignoring the true factor of what debate is supposed to be which is education on how to actually respond to things i'd argue if you push for the uh, if you push for like i guess the education of debate you'll learn to be just better people by being able to look on both sides of things in that case we're only advocating this in the case they have no solvency on the matter you have to can't you can't buy any of their out of fiat answers because they have no solvency out of fiat because nothing that will happen none of their impacts are trigger and secondly if they, they try to if, even if they don't let them push into us because we don't link into their rhetoric at all none of our cards say that the u.s is like the, the dominant power almost everything that we do is either political or perceptual like go to our israeli preemptive strike argument nowhere in this says that the u.s is the guardian angel of everything but i'd rather say that the israel simply views us as our as views us as like a power uh, as views us simply views us as like their 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 tip on the balance scale so if we untip the balance scale they'll simply start sparking war with iran which triggers our impact of a uh, israel iranian war in that case when they have no solvency in their post fiat you have to buy the fiat impact which is us who only extends a clean thing secondly they drop the uyghurs or they tried to respond to it by saying nothing will happen but i argue like a china filling in uh, a, a Uyghur muslim genocide is still big anyway but us not advocating for china filling in or advocating for us staying instead of china we advocate for anti uh, anti-muslim genocide in the end we're still advocating for this uh, advocating for better things so like in that case if you don't allow china to fill in we don't allow china to genocide little muslims i would argue we're either like either we have no post uh, either like either they have like no post fiat solvency but we are we uh we actually have the salt we only have the link into their case because we're denying the actual simple fact of a weaker genocide onto our side of the flow their overview still doesn't really have any solvency either because the simple fact is is that none of our the judges here none of the people here are linked to any media you're on a semi-finals of debate panel you're not on tv nothing will actually change out of this they don't properly give you a warrant on why anything solves but onto the fact that like all the onto the analytic that all the topics are read by the same experts First, it's very abusive. That gets rid of almost every single neg argument in this entire debate. And secondly, it's an analytic. You can't buy a high schooler saying that all the topics are bad. You, if you want to actually say that all the experts are bad, give me an evidence. You don't buy the analytic. And secondly, none of our authors actually say that U.S. hegemony is good. Once again, uh, like a good amount of it is actually from the Israeli Times. The majority of it just simply says, like, no, none of it says that U.S. hegemony is good. So the fact is we don't link to the rhetoric. You only buy the side that has a fiat argument, which is our case. All right, we'll use a little bit of prep. I'll just keep a timer when I call my partner.
Okay, so that was about two minutes, 20 seconds used. Let me just pull it off. Okay, so the order is going to be our case and then their case. Our case winning their case. Is everyone ready? I'll take that as a yes. On our argument, the role of the ballots is vote for the team that best combats Christian militarism. The link is that the U.S. military is choked by white Christianity, affirmed to reject our senseless crusade on the Holy Land, heretics by removing Pope Donald's vehicle of war. The impact is that religious war against non Christians justify severe dehumanization of Muslims because we frame them as ruthless threats. The framing is that judges and debaters, academics, not political scientists, prioritize epistemological interrogation. That's through questioning the knowledge production of the round. Our solvency is to spread knowledge of the importance of ending our crusade. Educating children is a prerequisite to any horrible policies because scholars plan seeds in new thinking and leave shifts in public opinion. Rejecting Christian discourse is a priority to worrying about their policies. The most important thing is that they concede the framing that judges are academics, which means that it doesn't matter how much offense they have in the round. The only thing that matters is sending an intellectual signal as to why something needs to change. But let's go to their responses. They give us this response so that no one hears in media outlets. First of all, it's better Rather than repeating the rhetoric of the media and the rhetoric of the government that people who aren't Christian deserve to have to deserve to have the military intervene on them. But second of all, we would argue at literally 32 people like 31 people are on this call. More people are watching the live stream. If you're voting for us because we're changing their bias, if you vote for them, what's going to happen is that they're going to see the negative team win this debate and their perspective and their bias as to the U.S. intervention being good is never going to change. We allow a, a chance to actually change many, many people's perspective on why current actions is bad by interrogating it. But then third, uh, but then third of all, we would realize that like uh, they say that like uh, their response is basically saying at the public opinion and what people think that's not the media doesn't matter. But that's just not true because they drop the evidence from Dirksen, which says that public opinion and scholars and a change of opinion literally solved the crusades in the past. It doesn't matter if no one hears in the media, if we can change, if we can, uh, if we can start a change of public opinion, that matters. But then they give us this argument about China, Finland being bad. They drop the response that we're not advocating for the U.S. to leave the Middle East. By voting AF, you going, uh, by rejecting military presence, we're not advocating for them leaving. We're just sending a signal that religion and military is bad and that current military action is bad. If we can decouple religion, from the military that literally solves everything. The military can be good. The military can do good things. But if religion is blinding their sight and allowing them to, to dehumanize people who aren't Christian, that's what completely triggers dehumanization and all the impacts that we're talking about. But then finally, uh, they say that their debate is more educational. Actually, go to their case. They say that their debate is more educational. But realize they completely mishandled the response that all of their literature is, is, biased, towards what, uh, is biased towards what Christians and government think. And it all says that U.S. presence is good. They say their evidence doesn't say that. First of all, their brand's evidence says that. But second of all, realize that all of their their entire case is giving reasons why U.S. military presence is good. All their evidence gives reasons why that's true. That's still biased towards the general idea. And that's still biased towards what Christians believe in government. But then so the third of all, we would argue that like, Third of all, we would argue that they dropped the Combs evidence, which says that the media literally makes Islamic people look bad and literally makes Islamic people look as those who, who we need to dehumanize. So if anything, you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't count their literature. But then finally, well, finally, they dropped the argument that the political and people in government are always going to ignore any kind of solvency that they give, which means the best impact in the rounds to prevent the dehumanization of non-Christian others by voting out. Cross. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Are you going to time cross? Sure. Yeah, I'll it. Okay. So once again, I don't, how will you even say there's like a 31 people in their live stream? How will 31 people sway the opinion of a nation? Okay, wait, wait. Even, even if you don't buy that, at least we're not banal parroting the rhetoric of you. That's like an independent reason to vote for us. Mm -hmm. Second of all, this is being streamed on YouTube. Third of all, voting for us sends an intellectual signal to people not even outside this round, but in general, that our argument is true. It was much like the public policy debates in the past where, where they were discussing the Crusades. Sure, there may not have been like, I don't know, like 400 people in the room, right, but, they, but, they were, but, but scholars were spreading discourse about the argument, and the more you spread discourse about the argument, the more literature gets introduced. It's swayed by what other people see. So it comes to the point where the U.S. is so dependent on the media, or the U.S. is so dependent on 300, like 400 million people, or et cetera. I don't really know. Homie, right. homie, homie. If, if this is the only answer you go for in Final Focus, I guarantee you, you will lose. I don't like, think like this response is barely responsive to our case. If this is the only response you're going for in Final the Focus, I, I guarantee you, you will lose.
the entire argument you extend throughout the round is giving reasons why, like your evidence literally gives reasons why U.S. intervention in the Middle East is good. Right. But so extend in every speech, and you guys didn't respond to the fact that we don't link India rhetoric. All of our evidence. What? No, you're supporting. Okay, wait, wait. Even if okay, wait. Even if your evidence may not be explicitly biased, you can see the Combs evidence, which says that even implicitly, almost all media sources are biased against Islamic people. Even the even the ones that have claimed to be bipartisan or left leaning, they all are biased Trump against. Summary. What? And yes, yes. Matthew implicated it in summary. Yeah. It was read and constructive. Yeah. It was front. It was used to frontline in rebuttal. Yeah. Why? George, George definitely frontlined it, and we you just extended through ink. So that's that not was, okay. What was the frontline again? It, it's abusive. Is that was that it? Right. Uh, 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 us, have, us having conceded offense is abusive. Was that what? it? Well, no, 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 no. Your 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 argument is just like all literature on the neg is biased. Like all literature. Yeah. On wait, wait. It's, but it's your, yeah. So 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 here. That's like it's like a prereq, right? Why don't you respond to the prereq? Why don't you re you had you had a chance to truly test our arguments? You could have read turns to our argument. You could have read offense against our argument. You could have read theory arguments, but you chose not to. You chose to engage in topical debate even after we like we even even after we read this like even after we read this affirmative. We that card in rebuttal. We called for the card. Why didn't you send the card? We said do you have evidence saying that all of our stuff is biased? Yes. Yeah, you read an analytic and rebuttal. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, okay, okay. Wait. It was an analytic and rebuttal, but the Combs evidence explicitly says it's from case. Yeah. No. No. It was, it was inconstructive. It was inconstructive. Then also, you, you guys just don't you guys just don't respond to the explicit okay, warning thing but during the crusades. Okay, okay, it's fine. You can have a question. Yeah, oh, that was our time. No... Oh, okay. So, is there time left? I didn't time. Sorry. Uh, we have twenty seconds left. We can just. Okay. Start. So, like, really quick question: Why does like your topical debate matter if like political if people in government are just going to ignore it? Well, I mean, why does your matter if you don't have any solvency? We're debating no, what we debate is meant for. We do have solvency. Because you drop the evidence and the argument that's, that we send a signal that it's not okay. And public opinion not. matters. Public opinion solved the last crusades. Uh, how much time do we have left? Like 10 seconds-ish. I'm just going to, let me get on call with you. All right, cool. So I'm just gonna start off. It'll just go on. Start off on the K, I guess, and then we'll go into their case. All right. We would tell you that like they're just running this like random squirrely K in their case, and it's like a non-progressive team. They're reading off a pre-written extension doc. They barely understand the K anyway. Let's go on to the responses that we say. First, we would tell you that like um. And the China fill in argument that China fill in turn that George makes. They just tell you that they're not advocating for the resolution. The only way for the next side to debate, like we continuously tell you, is like uh, to assume that what happens in an AF world. Sure, even if there's an intellectual signal conceded that's not responsive to the argument that, hey, we have to assume what an AF world looks like and say why an AF world is bad. We say that in the affirmative world, like by definition, they have to defend like what would happen if you remove troops from the Persian Gulf. Even if it sends an intellectual signal, we also have to assume that there's an uh, like there's some sort of affirmative happening. At that point, we say that China allows, is, uh, allows China to fill in and continue Muslim aggression. Uh, like a continued Uyghur oppression in the Middle East. Now that's like perpetuating Islamophobia, independent piece of offense on their case, because like uh, that means that like China will allow, continue to perpetuate a lot of Islamophobia in the region. Their response isn't very responsive at all. Second, they say that like, oh, um, there's 31 people on this call and we should like reject media literature. Straight shotgun extended through ink. We tell you that like media literature is non-unique. Affirming in this round and sending a quote unquote intellectual signal is not going to solve back from media rhetoric, especially since no one here is from Fox News. They just say that 31 people are on the call. I look through the observers. Half of them are literally scouters. The other half of their coaches, their, their coaches and they're like uh, teammates you're not sending a signal to anyone you're just letting like um, uh, letting people get scouting information on your case and like uh, at the point that they shock them through the fact that we don't link into their rhetoric because all of our uh, uh, evidence is like political and perceptual they're not starting a change in public opinion either all they're doing is promoting running cases against like non-progressive teams like us that don't have a coach like, allowing for squirrely arguments to continue to be read in public forum we would say that that's like inherently bad they're not really promoting any uh, like intellectual signals going to our side of the flow they just try to tell you that first they say that uh, they drop the fact that the like, media ignore stuff like they just literally didn't provide us evidence for this they were an analytic and rebuttal the combs evidence 
wasn't really provided in case they didn't extend it in summary either. So at the point that they didn't provide us evidence, I say that's really abusive to bring up new evidence and final focus. I can't read a theory right now, but if I would, I could. I would say that it's not in rebuttal, so you don't buy the argument about like a Christian literature or whatever. And then they say that like, the media, like political people will always ignore solutions. Again, they don't have solvency on their side of the flow either. Then they say like the media dehumanizes people. Like the problem is that China Finland would also dehumanize people on like a post fiat level. At that point, you extend Iran, Israel, which is the clean extended power uh, link in the round. Like the balance of power shifts that causes a war, no income, this flow way on strength of link. Negate. Thank you. Okay, I'll take the remainder of our prep. We're just sending, we're literally just doing a Hail Mary and free swing. No, there's no way we win. Like, I don't know what we're saying. Uh, you're not on mute, you dummy. You're not on mute. <laughs> Okay, so that was almost all of our prep. I think I'm good now though. It'll start off with extensions. Let's start with extensions. They said it themselves, it's game over. The role of the battle is to vote for the team that best combats Christian militarism. The link is that the United States military is choked off by white Christians, affirmed to reject our census crusades on the Holy Land by removing Pope Donald's vehicle of war. The impact is religious war against non-Christians, which justifies severe dehumanization of Muslims because we frame them as ruthless threats. They concede the Smith evidence in rebuttal. Smith specifically says that dehumanization outweighs any other impacts. It is the root cause of all violence because it justifies things like war and genocide against populations. The framing is that judges are academics, not political scientists. That is really key, and it independently answers all the arguments that they make on our case. You prioritize the epistemological interrogation through questioning the production of the round. Our solvency, this is really important. It is to spread the knowledge on the importance of ending the crusades. Educating people is a prereq to ending horrible policies because scholars plant new seeds of thinking in people and lead to shifts in public opinion. Rejecting Christian, Christian discourse is a priori to worrying about policies. They make a few answers that they extend. First of all, they make this totally new argument in first final focus that affirmatives must, must, uh, must defend the hypothetical interpretation of the resolution. We would reject this on all fronts. They were asking us to be racist by not allowing for us to read our own advocacy. They're literally telling us, hey, you have to be racist in order to engage in topical debates. We say reject that on all fronts because the education that they're talking about is violent. It is violent rhetoric against people of color that are constantly bombed by unfettered military interventions. Then they say that we won't solve back for media rhetoric. Oh, also group this with all the rest of their responses. First of all, they can see judges and debate are academics, not political scientists, meaning even if they win 100% of offense and we win no offense, as long as you believe that religion and politics is bad, you vote for us. But second of all, we do solve back for all media rhetoric because the Combs evidence that goes conceded says that almost all implicit sources, all implicit media sources use media as a metric or, or like use fear as a metric to like uh, discriminate against Muslim people. Voting for us stops that. Then they say that they don't have a coach. So there were teams at the Blake round robin this year that didn't have a coach that read a critical argument. It's not a necessity. Finally, we reject topical knowledge in two ways. First, it's because almost all the literature written on this topic is written by, or it was influenced by white Christian evangelicals. They just say it's abusive, but they miss the Combs evidence that specifically says that the media is controlled by a lot of white Christians. But second, this is uncontested. Even the, if the app had something educational to say about the topic, we chose not to say anything because it would just manifest in nothing. The political would just pray our arguments away. Thank you. Good round, y'all. Good round, y'all. <laughs> Thank you for judging, judges.
All right. The decision is in. It is a 2-1 for the pro. Uh, I'm not surprised uh, that I sat, um, especially looking at this panel. And so I'm not really quite sure, like, what about my paradigm says that, like, this is a debate that I would uh, love to engage in, but, you know, the app make their choices. Um, I think uh, I couldn't, I, I'm a little surprised I'm, like, the grandpa at 29, but I guess that's how quickly uh, debate moves. Um, I think that I just don't really think that what the affirmative is saying is what public forum is. Um, I don't think that there's a place for that. I actually also think that the negative um, is actually making responses that like apply to the real world in terms of what's happening with Russia and China. I don't think the AF is engaging with those very well. Um, as someone who lives in Taiwan, like I think that their description of Chinese um, discrimination is something we hear about all the time. Um, and I think that that is relevant. Um, but I just don't think that my ballot does anything to advance this cause that the AF claims it does. I think all it does is put a double. They did it, yeah. They did it so they can run the argument. Uh, you need to put yourself on mute. Alec, Alec, you're not on mute. You disclose, Mom. They are running theory. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So I think, um, I don't think that me voting app actually does anything to advance this cause. I think that it puts a W next to your team name on tab room and on tab room, there's not even any sort of discussion of what your argument is. Like, I guess someone could go look at tab room and then watch this and then like endorse your theory or whatever. Um, I just think it's like really interesting. You're running this whole argument about changing US militarization, et cetera. And you claim that you have this audience of people and you literally don't have a single call to action um, for the audience anywhere in this debate. Like not a go knock on a fucking door and defeat Donald Trump in November, not a like beat any of these politicians that you say perpetuate this. Like there is zero sort of, if you really wanna like galvanize the debate community to like go do something and you have this audience, like you should ask people to like actually do something that's involved in politics. Like you keep saying like, oh, the judges are academics and not political scientists. Like, I mean, one, my degrees in political science. Two, like I teach US government all the time. So I think like that's a, maybe a definition of a political scientist. But three, like anybody in the debate community can tell you like, I have worked on campaigns, like that was my career for like multiple years. I like have made hundreds, like, like thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of phone calls, knocked on thousands of doors. Like I went to the Iowa, I went to Iowa for a week before the Iowa caucuses to actually like get out the vote for one of the candidates this fall, like, or this like January, like, you know, ask people to get involved to actually like beat the people that are perpetuating this policy instead of like telling the debate community to like give you a win so that you can like get to another round. Like, I think you're right. You probably have some sort of platform, but I think you used it to win a debate and not actually do anything that will actually have an impact on this militarization because you didn't ask anyone to actually do anything to get involved in our democracy, which will actually, you know, possibly hopefully stop this militarization of Christianity, which I agree is bad, um, but I just like don't think this is PF. So, you know, I don't vote for you, but obviously you win the debate. Um, I was also very surprised they read this argument in front of you, Chase. Um, so I do vote for this, but I do it very, very reluctantly because I think Chase is right that you don't actually demonstrate that good of a path to actually changing anything. Like, I think it's probably true in some marginal cases that your education changes children, changes things, might be true, but I don't think the link is that strong. The issue is, I think, Neg, the best responses that you were making were not the ones that you were actually extending. And so I had trouble voting for them. So for example, there's an argument that comes out of summary that's like, when you debate actual topical things on both sides, debaters become better people. So I think extending that argument more heavily into final focus would have done a better job showing why even if you accept their framing that all these post fiat impacts don't actually matter you can still win the round um i think that probably would have been more persuasive for me
there are also just like, um, if you need help, you can find some sort of accessible answers to Ks online. Um, some of them don't transfer well to public forum, but I think there are other things you can say in the educational level, like for example, being like allowing judges to say their vote changes this like structural violence, allows judges to like exculpate themselves from their own isms, which makes them worse people or things like that, that you can still impact on the education level, even if it is the case that um, you're not debating post fiat impacts. The reason I don't feel comfortable voting negative is just because I think the way that the negative collapse boiled down was just like the affirmative doesn't solve anything. And then I think the only last thing I have is your argument about trying to fill in. But even if I do evaluate post fiat impact, which I'm not sure I do, I think the extension of the actual link got very blippy towards the end. So the substance extension basically just turned into like, we should prevent China from killing the Uyghurs, which is absolutely true. But if I'm deferring to substance in a normal debate, I don't think there would have been enough of a link there for me to vote on it. So I also didn't feel there was enough of a link to vote on it here. I think y'all had a lot of good content at different parts of the debate. You just need to make sure to go for that content. Like I think the debaters become better people was quite good. Just make sure you are consistent with that. And I think you would have been in a stronger place. Uh, yeah, so I uh, also affirmed, I think that um, it was not uh, too hard of a decision for me because the neg is never really contesting, like, like explicitly contesting um, what the point of the round is or what the point of the judge is. So I feel like if the role of the ballot is conceded, which it is, and the framing of like the purpose of the judge as an academic as opposed to a policymaker is conceded, which it is, um, then I don't really I think that there's really any kind of defense on this argument in a sub substantive way by the end of the round, other than like the um, kind of cynical view of like, um, why does knowledge matter? Because we're not the people in charge, which like I said, I don't think is a good, you know, view of the world in general, but also I think that the uh, AFS like um, iteration of how it's, how like the solvency works is extended well and never responded to. And even if I think that it might not be completely true to as large of a, con as large of an extent as it might seem like I don't think that this round or my vote is going to like stop the, you know, stop the whole military industrial complex. I do think that it is uh, not responded to in the round at all and voting against it um, would be some intervention. So that's where I ended up voting. Great. Thank you, judges. Thank you so this much for the feedback. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Have a nice day, everyone.